are again, all mellow yellow. We're going to bring you the rivers of living water flowing from our bellies that the, the Word of God talks about, that we are living epistles bringing forth the living Word. And we just uh, declare this day will be an eye-opening, consciousness awakening moment for everyone listening. And we just uh, speak forth the hundreds of thousands of people that are turning on to this right now. So if you'd send us each a dollar. No, any uh, way that we erase that. Uh, let me start all over. <laughs> Go ahead. It's okay. We're, we're believing today that we're bringing you a, a negative truth that we have gleaned from the Word of God that He negative is... Truth. Huh? A negative truth? No, a negative truth. Nugget, okay. Yeah, a negative truth. And uh, we want to we wanna share it with everybody who views this program and we want to make sure it's you know because we're, we're walking in this and and we're basically practicing in it to get better because practice does make you better and so what we've been finding out and, and Don had a good good uh, word this morning even before we got on camera which was talking about We've talked about a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what? And, and a lot of it's been scattered here and there. We've talked about what we've thought or about what we've been taught and how it has not really lined up in, in what we're learning right now. But I started seeing that, that uh, sacrifice and burnt offering I did not desire, but a body. I desired, and, and that's in Hebrews 10, 8, and it's also in Psalms 40, verse 6, and it's like God didn't want burnt offerings and sacrifices, and so we're here, this is from the Unger Bible Dictionary, yeah, Unger's Bible Dictionary, and it says that uh, the fundamental idea of sacrifices may be gathered partly from their designation, partly from their nature. Sacrifices do not appear to have been instituted at first by divine command, and it, and it's like they and he's saying that they that they wanted to bring things to God so bad that they started killing God's creation and cutting their throat and then burning animals. You know, it's like how did you come to that? I did. I just don't. I don't even understand that. That they totally went fleshly. You know, burnt offerings. When this guy was talking about it, he said the word for burnt offerings in the Hebrew uh, meant really up in smoke, meant to ascend. And, and I think God was talking about ascending in the spirit, you know, not living of your own ideas and consciousness, but of God consciousness, the I am consciousness within you. And they, they totally went with the flesh. And when Solomon built his temple, there thousands and thousands of oxen and and sheep and goats that they sacrificed in the, the blood. They had special places for the blood to flow down and they burn them, you know. And what good does that do for anybody to burn an animal till there's nothing left? You know, if God was telling them to do something, to, to come in the spirit and to, and to go up higher, you know, it says in the book of Revelation to come up here, come up higher. And, and, and it's a spiritual thing to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh, it says in Hebrews. And they've all taken it around and they always go 100% flesh with, you know, let's kill an animal. It's, and it just never did make any sense to me. And it's shoved down our throat that that's, oh, that's the way it is because that's what these guys that we look up to, the rock stars of Christianity did. And it's like, well, they were just people, you know, and they were people trying to figure out God and maybe they figured the wrong way. Paul says, uh, we know in part and we see in part, we prophesy in part. And so, if that, if we now we see through a glass darkly. We only see part of the what's going on. And each man, if, if we try to figure out God and speak forth from a man, from a human point of view, this is what we get. In the Old Testament, he was an angry God that killed people and animals. In the New Testament, Jesus said, if you see me, you've seen the Father, and God is love, and I lay down my life for the brethren. He laid down his life. That he, he hated men's... Uh, anger and man's murdering ways so bad that he submitted himself to him to end it all and make us a new creation in Christ Jesus and now we still promote this kind of stuff. A 
of sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. They want you to obey. And you obey me because I'm the head goomba in the church. Anyway, I'm getting off here. But to be in the spirit, I was getting in the flesh, huh? A little fleshy there. But uh, you know, to go up in the spirit into smoke uh, is what he wants us to do. Now, how do you do that? And, you know, like he said, we're trying. You got to keep doing it. You got It's like learning how to play the guitar or the piano or speak French or Spanish. You got to keep trying until you until you come to a, a point where you, it's all in us. He said he's given us everything that pertains to life and God in us. So all this consciousness of God and the I am and everything is within us. This Holy Spirit is within us. This is the temple of the living God. The kingdom of God is within us. So, you know, how do we get it out here? But, so that's where we're at today. Well, with, with that being said, it's, it's like this morning. Um... I went into some prayer for my wife, and, and I said, you know, everything in this world, not not looking at God, but everything in the world brings confusion, it brings um, thoughts, it, it, it brings um, unreasonable demands upon us of being this or doing this. And I told my wife, I said, hon, you know, there, there's a lot of stress that you've been under. Everybody gets under stress. Everything you see or hear brings brings stress, and stress brings basically, uh, I would say, disease and sickness into your body. So I told my wife, I said, you know what? The Bible says that we need to be still and listen. And you know how hard that is to be still and listen and just sit before God? And if it's do nothing, just sit right there until you can hear. And I said, the first first thing that you're going to have against you is the fact that your thoughts, all of a sudden your brain or your thoughts, there are thoughts that come from nowhere. And those thoughts are like, uh, there's a word I'm looking for to use, but, but the thoughts that come are basically distractions. You begin to hear them. And we talked about this once, that we could tell our brain, stop, and we're not going to listen to those thoughts anymore or entertain them. And you know what happens? Honestly, when you do that, it's like your brain hears you listening and it stops. Would you say that's what you've... Um, and you step back, you know, well, this one guy teaches that you step back and you watch the thinker that you're... You know, why, why do these thoughts, like, like, have you ever had a thought that you didn't like? And every, everybody goes, yeah. <clears throat> and then you go, well, where did it come from? Well, nobody knows where it comes from. And I, I was doing it one time, because my brain is always talking about something. And, it, and it's like I stepped back and, and watched it, and it figured out I was watching it. This sounds weird. I know it sounds weird, but I'm weird. <laughs> so, so are you. But, uh, you know, and it... And it finally, it was, I don't know, I'll say 30 seconds, a minute, I don't know how long it was, but it finally stopped. It didn't stop. But I didn't tell it to stop. I, I stepped back and was watching. And it's like, you know, like when you're driving in the car, somebody does something wrong in another car, and your brain's going, you know, and you comment about everybody. I mean, and we've learned it probably from the news or the TV and everybody, you know, everybody chops it. Not as you can't say nothing or you lose your basketball team, you can't everything politically correct and everything. It's like, it, but to stop your brain from talking and worrying and, and being critical or negative, I mean, it's a trip. That where does all this come from? But, but you know, the, really if the kingdom of God and the word of God is within you and the knowledge of God is within you. To come inside and to hear that, even even some of the Eastern religions have that better than the Christianity thinks you ought to just talk and talk and pray and pray and talk and talk and, and do your little devotions in the morning and and go to work and, and be a butt and rip people off. But you know, uh, did I say that? Yeah. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> you know, you to come as God to walk in love to walk. You know, we always it, we were talking about that too. What would Jesus do or what? You know, with the goats and the and the uh, oxen and the sheep and everything, they had a scapegoat. Instead of them going up in smoke to higher places, they go grab an animal. They're going to send it up in smoke. Smoke. They totally went fleshy on it. It's always the scapegoat. Somebody else put it on somebody else. We got to put it on on Jesus. We, we they talked about a dope langer. 
with the quantum jumping thing that we looked up for a while, there's one guy has a teachings on quantum jumping, you jump into a parallel universe, we're really getting crazy today, but here we are. And, and it's like, that's what we do with Christ. We put everything on Christ Jesus, and then we don't have any responsibility. And then we even say that I'm just a poor sinner saved by grace, so, you know, I'm just probably going to sin here any minute if I wait long enough. And, and, you know, it's like, so we give ourselves an open door where we can do that. Instead of saying, I've been fearfully and wonderfully made, that I have the mind of Christ, that God has placed in me the kingdom of God, that I am the temple of the living God, the Holy Spirit dwells within me, the ancient of age, all wisdom and knowledge, the gifts of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, flow through me, out of my belly shall flow, rivers does flow, rivers of living water, and I walk as God in this world as the I am, through this, the way I look, this is how Christ looks through me, this is how Christ looks through him, and we walk as that, instead of blaming it on a dope laner, which is another person that looks like you in another dimension, why don't you take the responsibility and you go up and smoke? Hallelujah. Amen, amen. You know, that just came to me. That was straight from the throne room. There you go. <laughs> um, I, I had looked up, bef before we sit down to do this, I had looked up, because we talk about conscious and consciousness, and th those words, I, I looked them up so I'd have a meaning that if somebody asked me, and the meaning on consciousness is really being informed, and that's what we're talking about, because when you meditate, before God, what you are doing is you're making yourself aware because you're emptying out, uh, like we started this morning, you're emptying out your thoughts, you're emptying out um, basically everything. You're becoming empty before God. When you're being still and you got a lot of garbage in, as you would say in a computer, garbage in, garbage out, so that's what, that's what you become. But when you empty out, then you are open to hear from God. And in religious circles, it's taught that when you empty out, then something's going to come in and possess you, That's or, or a devil's going to jump on you, or whatever. I do not believe that's true, because even King David meditated, it says in the Bible, three times a day uh, towards the west. And so, was, the east? was it the east? Anyhow, it was east or west. You can look it up in the Bible. It, it's in there. It said he meditated. And meditation is a way of cleansing. Cleansing your mind. Even, you know, you're getting stuff from God that would lead you, guide you, and direct you. And so based upon that, I wrote some other stuff down. And it, God says he gave us the keys to the kingdom. What are the keys to the kingdom? And what I wrote down is the keys to the kingdom that he gave us will unlock every mystery that now hides from us uh, the secrets of our being. And the Bible says it's up to kings. And we're called kings and priests according to scripture. And it's up to the kings to search a thing out and find out. And search means you're uncovering or you're digging to, to find. So you're getting the leading, the guidance, the wisdom, the anointing from God, and then we go farther and say, like we said, what's it mean? What is it? How do we operate in it? If I don't know how to operate in it, I surely couldn't teach you anything that, that I have a lack of understanding on doing. So we've been looking it up. And this key, when you want to know how to use it, will open the door to all wisdom and all power in heaven and earth. And it will open the door to the kingdom of heaven, and then you have, but to enter in, as the scripture says, to become consciously one with me, with God. And by opening our, I, I don't want to go into that more because then people think we're not telling the truth. We're making everything up, and we're not. And the key that was that was given and said was, it says, this key to think is to create. Isn't that what God did? He thought. That's what we were talking about this morning. I won't bring up anything else, but God thought. Don said he measured. So there was thought that went in. How many hairs on your head did he create? He thought. Everything about you wasn't just a roll of dice and this is how you end up having one eye in your forehead and nothing else. You know, the nose 
on, on where your ears are, but God thought about everything He did. And He created from that. And what He created manifest. And we brought up a lot of other things, but at that point, you had some good stuff that we were talking about. Look, Amos uh, 4, verse 13, you know, talks about, For behold, He who forms the mountains and creates the wind, also that word wind is spirit, His spirit, who declares to man what his thought is, and makes this morning darkness, who treads the high places of the earth, the Lord God of hosts is his name. So but he who forms the mountains, he creates the wind, he creates the spirit, who declares to man what his thoughts are. Now is that saying what his thoughts are, God's thoughts, or he declares to man what man's thoughts are? And if we if we listen, you know, it, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Well, if he gives you the desires of your heart, are they his desires or your desires? So are they his thoughts or your thoughts when you get, when you come into this? Can you really hear God? See, they, they've made it where we have to go to somebody that really knows the Bible and and listen to them. And then you, you know, they're not doing 100% right when you get to know them. So, I mean, so it's, a, I think each individual is the temple of God. You're, you're the temple, I'm the temple. Wouldn't you like to be a temple too? But, uh, and you are. But, so he formed the mountains. He thought about it. He, he formed them. That means you had to set forms if you formed something. You know, so he he measured out the waters in Isaiah uh, 40, verse 12. It says, he measured out the waters. You know, it, it you, so he, he did, you know, what he was talking about, thinking about before you do something or thinking about that I be still and to know that I am God. I'm an extension of God to walk out. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. He's in you. You're in Him. You're all in the Father. Uh, John 17. You know what I mean? You know, do you really think about this stuff? Or I'm just I'm just here sitting at the third row trying to get a better job. And I'm just, you know, I'm just trying. I'm just I'm just trying to be a good person. I'm trying to be, you know, what, what, what would Jesus do? WWJD, you know, what, what would Jesus do? And, you know, and all this, you bring it down, so you're putting it on somebody else. When you are the ones at the door, Jesus is the door. You come through the door, out into the pasture, out into the what he has for you, and the green, beautiful stuff. And we're still sitting here going, how am I going to do that? You know, but that's the questions. Who am I? What do you want me to do? Holy Spirit, show me, reveal to me the things in my life that you put here that are what I'm supposed to bring forth. That's and we've said it before, your fingerprints are different. Your you know, everything about you is different than the, the person next to you. Even you know, my wife and I were talking the other day, even though we you know, forty eight years of marriage and she still looks at the kids different than I do. She still looks at life different than I do. I mean we I mean we have a lot of things in common, but she still basically, you know, he he thinks and looks and sees things from a different point of view than I do. Even though we're sitting here talking basically about the same thing. His life and each one of you are different than the God. Why would you come to a religion where everybody's supposed to be the same and wear the same hat and cover your face and no paint? Why do they want to cover up the women? Eight eggs, for uh, it's good for you. Your hair and everything else it's good for. Vitamin D is good for you. Now they're finding out vitamin D is more important than anything. And it's like they told us for years, even I said this before, when our daughters, our grown, our oldest daughters were, were little, they told my wife and the people that were having kids at that time not to breastfeed because formula, Infamil, was coming out and they were all getting kickbacks ooh, from Infamil. And so they told women to stop breastfeeding. We knew one girl that wrapped her breasts and kept them like this for whatever till the milk went away and did not feed her kid breast milk. And now we find out that everything the kid needs is in breast milk. But the, and now we still go to doctors and want to know what you think. What you think? Chemo and radiation. You know, you got anything? Sure. Any? <laughs> you know, the, the word that the Bible <clears throat> talks about that we can speak can either create and encourage life or it can kill or bring death. And so I don't know how many of us really believe that our words have the that the power of our words, which is the, the word of God that we speak, can devastate or not by what we speak out of our mouth. 
Uh, and it says that what's in our heart is what we believe, and what we believe we speak out of our mouth. So I've been reading that we can speak life in the end into any situation rather than speak death by calling it names or just speaking you're a you're a uh, you're a dimwit or something like that those are not good encouraging words that lift up and the, the word of god the bible as as we read it says speak that which is good and pure and holy and uplifting and if you can't speak that then don't speak anything don't tear down people with your words don't cut them with your words because other things we know that we've heard and we've seen on TV is words cause wars. Words divide marriages. Words kill. And, and we don't want to do that. It's, it's easier that we would, would speak that which would turn somebody's life around and lift them up by the love of God coming out, out of our mouth. So we, we, again, still need to be very careful what we speak. Um, I'm trying to think, what else? I, I just try to be careful. I don't want to judge anybody with my words. I don't want to say anything that would bring a different result with words that would be negative. But I'd like to speak, I, I want to continue practicing speaking words that would be positive and uplifting. And that, that's what we're trying to bring to you from the Word of God because. Um, God is love. God is unconditional love. And I've heard people say that, well, unconditional is more of a respecter of a person, but it's not. God doesn't judge us. If He did, um, well, land sakes, we wouldn't have any hope. Land sakes, I haven't heard that one in a while. But like you said before, who told you you were naked? Who told you you were a sinner? You know, it's man that told us that we were a sinner. And, and uh, uh, even with the snake in the garden, a talking snake, uh, this one guy said that, that the DNA looks like this, it's like a ladder, but it looks like that, that some people believe that, that, that it was in our DNA to, to go that, you know, like he was saying that the, the snake, who was the snake? But, uh, you know, why didn't they eat of the tree of life? Why did they go after the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? There's, there's a lot of gaps and, you know, I mean, we're supposed to come by faith, live by faith, but, you know, to speak only good things about people, about, you know, you know, the election is coming up to, to everybody is just angry at everybody about everything. And, 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 you know, the whole infrastructure of the United States, the water and everything is coming to, you know, we spend all our money on Wall Street and banks and, and offshore banks and, and stuff like these guys are just ripping us off like crazy. And they, and the people have been in office for 30, 40 years and they're all in with all the corporations and they don't even take care of the people. But, but so we have to speak light and to change this, these people. God is all and in all. So he's in even the bad guys. So to speak light in these people where they see that their, their intelligence, their whatever they've learned is not God. Because, you know, we are, God is, comes through us and we're part, we're an extension of God. But this is going to lay down. It's really the spirit, not the flesh that's God. You know, I was going to read this real quick about... Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, measured heaven with a span, uh, calculated the dust of the earth in a measure, weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Who has directed the Spirit of God or as his counselor has taught him? You know, so he, he thought about things before he made things. So we're having to get back to that, that we need to think about things in our life. See, they teach us only think about, you know, go to college, get a job, get married, get a house, get a bigger house. Get a boat, a car, get a, you know, whatever. Go on vacation, uh, buy a vacation home, HGTV. And anyway, and and to come into all these 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 things, but they never think about the spirit. But some, you know, I look at a lot of stuff on YouTube. Some of the hits on some of the spiritual YouTube things are in the millions. People want spiritual, and they're not getting it from the the. We're not getting it from places we used to go. And, and uh, you know, because they have all these do's and don'ts and rules. And, and it's like, and I know that there has to be some judgment here. But to tell people that they are loved, that they are fearfully and wonderfully made and everything's okay. You're, you, know, you have all this within you. I don't have to go to a, you know, now we have to go to a, a child psychologist to learn how to, to raise our kids or we have to go to we can't go to a regular doctor we have to go to an ear nose and throat or a 
a whatever, you know, a specialist in the field to go, you know, we can't work on our cars because they made them all computers now instead of the way they used to make them. And, and so you can't really do anything anymore on your own. You have to go get somebody else to do it. And it's all about money, making more money, this guy making money. And, and it's all about, you know, it's just, it's crazy. And to bring it back down to who gives a flying rat's hat and to, to find out what, you know, I want to know what the truth is. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, you know. And, and since we don't know everything at this moment, we do have everything within us, but it hasn't been revealed totally to us. It's revealed on a need to know basis, I guess. But I think, you know, coming to God as a child and just believing like you believed your parents, if you had good parents when you were younger, like we were talking earlier, if they said they were gonna get you a bike, you knew they were gonna get you a bike, maybe a month, but they were gonna get you one. And so if God's told you things in your life and everybody I believe has heard something from God, even when they were young and, and you know, too, that God wants you to do, or you felt really a strong urge to do this, then you need to get back to that and ask God, how am I going to do that? I've always really wanted to help those people. I've always really wanted to, to be a veterinarian. I've always really wanted to visit Africa and help people. I always really wanted to, to be a singer and, and sing songs where people are touched and, and moved and changed by the songs that I sing. How do I get to that place? You know, Holy Spirit, I'm going to sit here and wait and listen to you. And I ask you to reveal to me. And maybe it won't happen the first time. Or maybe it'll come to you an hour later after you get up and walk around. You know, I mean, it, it just got, we, you know, people may go to the store and the guy says something that clicks in your brain and you go, wow, that's it. Or on TV or you read it in a book that, you know, a week later and you understand what you're supposed to do. What are you supposed to do? Talk. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to bring the talents and the gifts and things that God put in me to others so that it can encourage and help them. I'm supposed to share what I am with other people. And so, I think, but you need to keep asking, you know, uh, who am I? What? Who am I really? Uh, what do you want me what am, what am I placed here for? What is the plans? It says the plan, he has plans for your life and they're good plans, they're plans to prosper you. But you know, to ask, to show me, and then and then you to set out the day. I mean, this the one guy said, and I've been trying it when, I'm, when I remember it, the night before, to set out the day and to, to say it's gonna be a good day, a blessed day, and everybody's gonna be uh, blessed and joyous and, and, and that, there's going to be a flow of love in my life with everyone I come in contact with. It's going to be, we're going to be, we are one. That, I, that We're in everybody. We're all part of each other. We came from one source. We came from God, in the beginning God. And so all these people you come in contact, good, bad, ugly, fat, skinny, anybody, that is part of you. And, and it's like we have to recognize, you got to recognize, as they used to say, that that they are a part of you and that you're not, they're not against you. That maybe they got a bad attitude or something happened and they got a toot that day. So you got to get around it and find out something to bring them. It was a Jackson Brown song that said, if I could get you to smile before I leave, that's all I'm here for. If I can get you to smile before I leave to understand that he loves you, that God has placed all this wisdom and knowledge, the ancient of age, the, the Holy Spirit, the the spirit that hovered over the waters in the beginning of everything is in you. And to tap into that instead of Professor Burt, you know, uh, it just blows me away that we want to hear from some man that he's got the Holy Spirit in him too, but he's, he's working off his own human intellect. And to, to think that man can grasp what the infinite God is anyway, totally, is, is insane. And so to bring that love, that he, we do know that God is love and that he loves you and he wants to help you. And I think we got to go, you know? mm -hmm. we got to get out of Dodge. But we, we thank you for being here. We ask you to, you know, put some comments on the YouTube channel. Put some, you know, help us out here. We want to we wanna know the truth. If we're wrong, we're wrong. If I offended anybody, I ask you to forgive me. But I just, all this world, the way it's going, and all the input, and all the stuff, and all the people that are trying to make a point, or, or you know, the, the, you know, yeah. Amen. <laughs> See you later. God bless. <laughs>